Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. We're going to talk about how the centre is being made into the far right, ladies and gentlemen. Hang around. Okay, we're going to talk about how the centre ha is being accused of being the far right, which is a very strange state of affairs. Have you noticed today that everything seems to be Nazi? You know, everything is racist, you know? Like Mary Poppins apparently is racist because she uh, got a bit of blackface on when she went and cleaned the chimney and that's somehow meant to represent that she was putting on blackface like Al Jolson and now she's like doing a minstrel show, which is, actually has nothing to do with what was happening in Mary Poppins. But apparently now because of that, she's a racist. Dr. Zeus is apparently a racist because I don't know, in someone, the green eggs and ham, somehow that, that that's, I don't know, it must be anti-Semitic or something, God knows what. I mean, it's utterly ridiculous. The people that are now being accused, Ellen DeGeneres, who's a liberal uh, host show, was accused of being homophobic, even no, she is gay because she liked somebody, I think, who supported Bohemian Rhapsody uh, winning the winning best Oscar or, or winning best like actor. Honestly, she was accused of being homophobic, even though she's one of the biggest like LGBT like activists. Everyone is a Nazi or homophobic or xenophobic or transphobic or a racist or you know, it's utterly, utterly ridiculous. So what is going on right now is what I call the centre is being accused of being far right. So that basically means everybody, the silent majority, everybody in the middle of society is now accused of being a Nazi, you know, which is utterly ridiculous. Because if there is anyone who is actually near Nazi, they are like the radical, radical fringe of the extreme right. You know what I mean? And they would make up a 0.001% of the population. And they're accusing about 50 or 60% of the population of being far right or... And, and, and it's really, really strange state of affairs. For example, in the wake of the uh, New Zealand uh, attacks, Jordan Peterson, who is quite a centrist figure, I wrote a, uh, an essay uh, on The Unshackled, which you should go check out, called The, um, the, uh, the Delirious Ambiguity of uh, Jordan B. Peterson, which you should check out at the Unchecker website where I talk about his politics. But he's really a centre figure, and he really makes the point of being a centre figure. He's maybe slightly right-leaning, you know, like in the sense of, like, mildly conservative, you know, mildly conservative liberal. And he is now banned from... Um, his book is banned from New Zealand. I mean, that's a, a state of affairs that's absolutely shocking. And Cambridge University which is one of the grand old universities of the United Kingdom, has banned him from speaking. Cambridge University, that's like this, there's two main universities in England, there's Oxbridge and Cambridge, and they have a history that goes right back to, like, you know, uh, um, you know Charles Darwin and... Um, uh, uh, Newton and, and like and, and supporting free speech and, and, and the fact that they're now banning a figure like Jordan Peterson is utterly, utterly ridiculous. And the way that common sense opinions um, are being made out to be far right or, or Nazi. For example, when I interviewed Fraser Anning, um, I, I spoke to him and I noted that a lot of his opinions were essentially the opinions of sort of everyone's parents in the 1970s, that, you know, that, that a country should maintain a basic holistic population. That, for example, France should mainly be French. You know, it should be mainly made up 70, 80% of actual people who are French, ethnically French, and that British people, the British or Britain, should be made up mainly of people who are 70 or 80%, you know, of that, you know, of the British Isles or of the United Kingdom, you know, of Scotland and Wales and Ireland, right? You know, right? Northern Ireland. Uh, and the same could be said of Germany or any European country or even Australia, that this country should be made up of 70 or 80% of people who are, you know, Australian, you know? And um, this is considered now a ra like a radical far-right idea. To, to voice that idea at a university or to voice that idea in media as I'm doing right now. And it's utterly ridiculous because it's a common sense idea. And this is what another thing, Japan is a country that I bring up uh, quite often. For, but say, for example, uh, I were to move to Japan. Um, and now, as soon as I arrived in Japan and took up my job, so I worked in media or, or journalism in Japan, would I be instantly Japanese? I think I would say, no, I would not be instantly Japanese simply because I moved there. And, um, you know, I would not even speak a fucking word of Japanese and I would not be Japanese. But there's this idea that if you move to Western civilization, 
The moment you arrive here and you get your citizenship papers, you are Australian or German or French or... or in, and it's utterly, utterly ridiculous. It at least takes two or three generations. For example, we saw this with um, the generation of Italians and Greeks. Now, they, many of them uh, immigrated here post-World War II, and many of them have actually fitted in. If I was to actually praise multiculturalism in one instance uh, of where it kind of worked, I think that the Italian and Greek migrations to Australia actually kind of worked. And after two or three generations, you know, I know many Greeks and Italians who are my friends who they used to run nightclubs with me and other ones from the film industry and stuff. They're very Australian now. And, they, you know, they're called, I guess, the Wogs. One of the things they called themselves was the Wogs. And they used that, oh, I'm a good Wog, mate. You know, I know Nick Giannopoulos and all these people. You know, I've hung out with them and stuff. You know, they use that word. And what's funny is, is they let you use it to them. Like, I can pretty much go to Nick Giannopoulos, oh, you silly wog, and guess what? He's okay with it because he uses wog in every name of every show. That means, and that is, the, that is actually how you defeat racism too, and this is what people don't understand about words that are offensive. For example, the Italians and Greeks, they took that word wog and they owned it and they began to use it amongst themselves. But they basically also let Aussies, who they call us skippies or whatever, skippy the bush kangaroo mate, you know, right? They use that against us or whatever and, and it's kind of a form of camaraderie that we joke around and oh you're a skippy or you you know and, and, and no one is upset no one's upset it's not hate speech it's actually a form of camaraderie between friends you make jokes about it and that is actually how racism ends you know and that's what people don't forget all this banning of speech when offensive words no 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 you've got to allow everyone to use them and to forget being offended by them when you forget being offended by them by the group that is being, you know, like if you have a, a word that it's, that's uh, like considered hate speech and it's against your particular group, you have to get used to that word. You have to embrace it and then let anyone use it. And when you do that, the word loses all its power. And that is how racism ends. And that's an interesting point in a lot of ways. And this is again related to what I'm talking about about how the center has been um you know the way that we would as people living in a community we would sort out things like you know like uh, ethnic differences by this kind of jokey humor and stuff and racist jokes and things like this um there's a great video online you can see by zizek where he talks about racist jokes which he says are a form of camaraderie just like i'm saying yeah go check that out zizek um racist jokes just google that and you'll get the video so you know it's really ridiculous the way that they're taking away this uh, essentially mainstream almost camaraderie and common sense and they're trying to radicalise it as far right. This is extremely dangerous I think what the media is doing and what mainstream politicians are doing where they're accusing the silent majority of being like Nazis or something and they say that with the Trump supporters like Hillary Clinton accused the basket of deplorables he said oh you know half of Trump supporters are radical Nazis so what 30% of the American population are radical Nazis? I don't think so. This is very ridiculous and this is a politics of division again pushed by this elite class that I'm constantly railing against so I think that's what I wanted to say today just to kind of speak out against this and to say no you know I mean let's get back to being having common sense in politics and the, the middle the center is the center and there are radical extremes on the left and there are radical extremes on the right and let's have a little bit of common sense uh, in politics and you know Mary Poppins is not racist I'm afraid you know just because she cleaned a fucking chimney I mean what planet are we living on it's like we've entered the twilight zone sometimes. Seriously, maybe we have.